What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video on Exotic Astrology. Today we will end the series of Yes, Dignity of Planets which we started long back. Okay, so we discussed about how planets perform in their friend signs, in their mood tricot, exaltation, debilitation, enemy sign as we are discussing now. Okay. So if you have not watched the videos earlier, then please go and watch. And if you have not yet subscribed, then please do it in no time. Okay. <laughs> and also click in the notifications bell so that you get messages when I upload videos. Okay. Because I'm uploading only for you and for me to learn. Okay. <laughs> And before beginning, as I always say, God is there with you all the time, even if all the planets are placed in your enemy signs. <laughs> Just look to him and he will still <laughs> try to help you. <laughs> what to do every, if everything is screwed, right? <laughs> He's the only option we have. <laughs> Okay, so we discussed about the Suras, the Sun, Moon, Jupiter and Mars and who are remaining the bad guys today. <laughs> it's not the bad guys actually, it's the time of the bad guys these days. So we have Venus and best friend of Venus, Saturn and good friend of Venus, Mercury remaining about whom we will discuss today and we will end the series and also about our nodes, Rahu and Ketu. Okay. So, Venus, Mercury and Saturn are the most prominent planets in Kali Yuga because they represent money and work. Okay. Materialistic society basically. That is why they are called, they are known as Asuras. Okay. Those things, those planets who, which give you pain and suffering, okay? Because Saturn is uh, sorrow, Venus is happiness. Happiness and sorrow are always together and Mercury is on top of them. <laughs> Money basically, you know, driving you from here and there. So, Venus gets exalted in the sign of Pisces, okay? That's the peculiarity in the enemy sign of Jupiter. Venus does not like Jupiter very much because... Although they are natural benefits, both of them, but still they don't like to be with each other much. Because when both of them are together, either of them, either one of them, the combination will go on either of the sides. Depending on which of them has the lowest degree. Suppose Jupiter is in um, one sign, any house in 5 degrees and Venus is in 10 degrees. Then the person will behave in a Jupiterian manner in related to Venus areas and if Venus is in 5 degrees and Jupiter is in 10 degrees then the person will behave in a Venusian way when coming to spirituality he will be very much luxury conscious even if he goes somewhere he'll be like oh I will go to this uh, holy place but I don't know if there is a good place to stay now the hotel is not good I will not stay good food has to be there no only then I will go so you see now Venus gets exalted in Pisces, about which we already discussed. That's very surprising. That this is the last sign of the zodiac and the planet of love is searching where will I find happiness. And then ultimately the predicament of this planet is it has to go to the sign of its enemy. Very bad. And on the other side, its friend, Mercury, Says that, oh, if you come to my house, you'll suffer. If you want, you can still come. Which is Virgo, right? Debilitation. So why does Venus get exalted in Pisces? We already discussed, but I'll just say in brief that it finds happiness in spirituality ultimately. In giving up things, in being selfless, in sacrificing for others, in doing uh, things that will lead to the ultimate higher fulfillment. Okay, Venus is the ability of a person to make the right choices which will give him fulfillment in the long run okay that is why if that ability is not good you will end up choosing wrong people for your life and then you will call people 
uh, and astrologers and then say, oh, this person said he will marry me. Oh, this person, this boy is not marrying me. What should I do? What to do, man? Madam, it was your mistake. Who told you to get into a relationship with this man? But you were like, no, no, he's a good person. I will get into it. But then it didn't happen. So your ability to make the right choices is not good because of which you end up making wrong choices. And in the end, you suffer. Okay. That is why it is recommended for anybody whose Venus is not well placed to consult higher authorities and take help of the divine signs like astrology or palmistry or numerology or tarot card or whatever it is. Or talk to some guru about choosing your life partner. Okay. Otherwise, it's very likely we'll end up doing some blood and then you will be running. Because once you are there, you can't do anything. The precaution has to be taken before, right? So that's why Venus gets exalted there. And in Sagittarius also Venus is quite good. It's not very happy there because Sagittarius is more of core spirituality, the religious practices and you know, puja, tantra, yantra, you know, mantra, and the holy places. You know, Venus is like, oh my God, I thought I will enjoy in the beautiful streets and in the heavens and where I have come in this holy place, my God. <laughs> And Sagittarius is a fire sign. So what happens when Venus sits in a fire sign? Kind of the water of the planet. Because Venus is a watery planet. It gets extinguished. Especially like in signs like Leo, Sagittarius and Aries. Okay, Especially in Aries. Then the natural trait of the planet, which is selfless love, gets compromised to some extent. But here, the comp here it's not necessarily a compromise. It is more of being strong with one's ideals. Okay, well, The person loves his ideals. The person can love his spiritual practices, can love his religion. Equally, it is equally good uh, for Venus to be in Sagittarius than it is to be in Pisces. It is equally good. Okay, Only thing is sometimes there can, the, the, the spouse which we get can be uh, too much philosophical or... Uh, they might be uh, too much optimistic sometimes. That can cause some trouble. Okay. But apart from that, I have seen that uh, Venus does fabulous in Sagittarius. Okay. You will get a very good person who is very mature and who is very broad minded, who has Jupiterian traits. Okay. Because uh, Sagittarius is the Mudrikon sign of Jupiter. It's a very powerful sign. It is the sign that it is the sign of positivity, divinity, in a higher consciousness, beliefs. Or you can also meet your spouse when you are in some religious organization or whatever. We will go to that later. And then Venus in the sign of Leo has some challenges. Uh, because Leo is an enemy sign just like these Sagittarius and Pisces. But the problem with Leo is the person becomes too much obsessed about control. Okay, That's the negative part. The person becomes very authoritative in relationships. Okay, He wants everything his way or she wants everything her way. That cannot happen in relationships. There has to be compromise. Okay, And also these people, especially if it is in first 13 degrees of Leo, which is Marghanakshatra, these people are like, I am the king of the world and I am the king of romance. Especially if a girl has a Venus in Leo in 0 to 13 degrees of Leo, in Magha Nakshatra, she can feel, I am this queen. She may or may not be, that's a separate thing. But she will feel as if she is like that. Especially if this is happening in the first, fifth, seventh or eleventh house. This obsession can become too strong. They are very much demanding attention. They are very much attention seeking. They are like, oh, I want this. Now, how can this person ignore me? How can he or she not say hi to me? No? I don't have salam in Hindi. <laughs> related to the opposite sex you understand because venus is opposite sex they want all they always want the opposite sex should come to them and say oh man madam you're looking so great you're the most beautiful uh, queen ever i have seen <laughs> they want people to say like that about them okay and then uh, venus in cancer also becomes very emotional okay that is not bad but too much emotional actually. Okay. Pisces is also water sign. But that is more of a philosophical sign. You understand. The final sign. But <clears throat> in the sign of cancer. Venus can become quite moody. You know, the, the wife in a man's church. She can be extremely moody. And she will be like. 
too much security obsessed now because cancer is the sign of security these people get a hint that you are talking to some other girl now, maybe you are talking to them just like a friend but these people will go oh how can you talk to her you don't love me you won't love only them they will be like this <laughs> so if your venus is in cancer be be uh, prepared for getting a spouse like this okay all the men out there <laughs> But this is a very good placement for uh, home and the wife can like to, she can love to you know, decorate uh, things in the home and stay like that in, inside the setting of the home. Okay. And Venus in the Aries has similar dynamics of that to Leo. Okay. But only thing in Aries is the person becomes or too much obsessed about themselves. Okay. They may not... Uh, the difference between Aries and Leo is in Aries that can happen more this controllership and the person can be too much obsessed about what he thinks is right and wrong because Aries is also the first house where sun gets exalted the Venus behaves like sun it does not want to compromise okay in Leo it can still compromise to some extent but in Aries it completely uh, says no I want everything my way okay and they can have a tendency to jump from one relationship to the other in Aries and Scorpio also and in Leo they can be very much creative that is one positivity and in Scorpio, it is like love love and hate, that kind of a relationship which Venus has. The person is too much obsessed about you know, the partner and controlling them. You know, because if it is in Jeshta Nakshatra, especially last degrees of Scorpio, then uh, this nature will be prominent. They will be very much dominating and very much controlling towards the spouse. Okay? They will be like, I will keep him in my grip. I will not let him do anything. I will not let him go anywhere. And the good part about Venus in Scorpio is when they love, they will like love, they will love you very much if it is in Anuradha, okay, in the middle part of Scorpio. And uh, they will expect a lot of things from you, especially in Scorpio, and then they will give you also. That is the good part. So it is like a very intense relationship they have, especially if this is in the D1. And if this is in the Navamsha, in the D9 chart, about which we'll discuss later, this can in indicate some suffering, okay. And then uh, Cancer, Leo, yes, everything is over for Venus. All the enemy signs we have discussed. Best is Pisces, of course. And then for Saturn, Saturn gets debilitated in Aries. We'll discuss about debilitated Saturn later in detail. But we have already discussed about some traits. That the person uh, wants to do things in a systematic manner, but fails because Mars is the Aries is that sign of impulsiveness so they will jump from today I will join the gym today I will do this today I will do that and then at the end they're like oh nothing is happening and then they get frustrated this, these are the typical traits of uh, Saturn in Aries but I have seen and heard and read from the scriptures okay and then they can then they can feel that things are running at a pace higher than they can control especially in their work and uh, work environment duty ethics commitment etc and Scorpio also Saturn gets Saturn feels as oh my god where I have come is this dark house okay and then the person can do good in research this is one good thing about Saturn and Scorpio they can do good in areas of research where a lot of depth a lot of deep analysis is required they can do good in careers which need uh, drilling inside the ground okay and uh, they can also do good in hidden uh, secret government agencies you know, like Saturn and Scorpio because their major karma can be towards all this. And if Saturn is placed in Leo, it is also not very good because then the person is forced to become the leader and sometimes even if he does not have the traits. There are some famous examples. I will not tell the examples but I know people who have they are Saturn in Leo, uh, they can be forced to be leaders sometimes, okay? And they may not have the capacity to lead the public because Saturn cannot lead actually, it has to follow, okay? But if the follower is forced to be a leader, then it becomes like a funny situation for the public, okay? Of course, there is a famous Indian Prime Minister also, ex-Indian Prime Minister, who has this combination, this placement. I will not tell his name, you can Google it. 
<laughs> and everybody knows about his blunders and the things which he has done. That is why I am not taking his name because that may create some karma for me. <laughs> Okay, uh, but these people can do in good in governments and authority related areas, especially uh, even if Saturn is in Sagittarius, they can become great lawyers. Okay, and in Pisces, they can work uh, well in ashrams and places where people cannot reach you know, or they can do something related to water or something like that or giving donations and all this so it's kind of average placement because Jupiter and Saturn are not exactly enemies they are like neutral to each other but they don't like each other very much because Jupiter only says and Saturn says oh, why you're just speaking just, just do something and Jupiter says what is the use of doing if you don't know what you're doing <laughs> and then Saturn in the sign of cancer it can be very emotional the work the person as soon as he starts working he becomes very emotional and these people can have difficulty in uh, doing things without putting emotions into it which is kind of a challenge for them okay because uh, Capricorn's opposite is cancer so Saturn now is thrown away from his own house and he's forced to go to it is like I am sitting here in front of me there is this building. I want to sit here but I am forced to go there. Do you understand? It is like that. So then what happens? There is this... Uh, it's like you are seeing that house. So Saturn wants to work without seeing how he feels. But then he is forced to always feel and work. So these people will always feel, okay, I don't like this job. Should I do it? Should I not do it? Because Saturn and Capricorn says, do hell with your emotions and your likes and dislikes. You like it or not, just what you don't think, what is what you like, what you don't like. Put everything into the garbage. Just do it. But Saturn and Cancer is not like They'll be like, oh, I don't like to do this. Maybe I'll change my job or something like that. So th these kind of things can come with Saturn and Cancer. Aries, I already told. Scorpio is gone. Jupiter is gone. Leo is gone, Cancer is gone. Who is winning? Saturn is finished. And then Mercury. Mercury in Aries is okay, not very bad. Mercury does quite well in fire signs because fire signs are ruled by uh, Jupiter and Mars and Sun. Only thing is in Aries it can become too much obs too much focused about what he thinks is right and wrong. He can be too much aggressive. He, his communication can be too much aggressive towards his own ideas. They can have difficulty in seeing the other side of the story. Okay, Mercury in Aries. And Scorpio also it can uh, uh, get quite confused no? because Mercury gets debilitated in Pisces which, which are water sign which is a water sign. So Mercury in Cancer also takes decisions based on emotions, which is not very good. Okay, suppose you are uh, you are planning to open a business, but your wife says, "Hey, why are you opening this business? No, I don't like this. Don't do this." And then, then uh, or your mother says, or some lady says, "No." Then, to in the fear of not displeasing them, then you may feel okay maybe i will not do this business maybe it's not good okay so that is not very good oh, now of course what they may saying may be right but just because they are saying you should not do it you understand or suppose your friend says now why are doing this you should do that now i like this more so you should do a proper analysis of uh, no, especially mercury in cancer they can have suffering in this regards they, they can bring emotions into their decisions which is not very good because at times emotions can uh, give us challenges in areas and they may end up giving loss to us okay and then in fire signs like Leo the person can get very much obsessed about establishing his authority suppose he writes a book he'll be like he can go on fighting for all these things that okay you know my book is the best because son is the king right he wants to be the king of communication okay they can be very much aggressive author uh, uh, journalists I've seen with Mercury Leo very much aggressive yes I'll be like yes what I'm saying is the one 
okay and mercury in sagittarius well it's like putting the planet of money into the house of the guru <laughs> they can be a great pandit greatly knowledgeable person in scriptures they can quote shlokas like this verses like uh, if he reads the gita he he will uh, quote down all the 108 important shlokas or maybe all the 700 shlokas if he reads the bible he will memorize all the verses because sagittarius is that sign of dharmic spiritual upliftment also so it's very good actually to have mercury uh, they can write spiritual books of how to uplift people and then in the sign of pisces it gets debilitated because it completely loses itself and that is why there is the saying which says that you can lose everything but don't lose your brain okay <laughs> so these people can maybe give money without thinking also and then they can be cheated later on so that's the trend of mercury in this signs and in leo as i said they can con- they can fight over authorship okay and in mars over too much control over their ideals and in scorpio uh, the mercury can get confused <laughs> it can go deep 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 and then at one point it is like oh my god what is this now i am confused should i go here should i go there so paralysis in decision making you know, mercury can have that okay so that's it from my side i think i have covered all and rahu ketu i have already covered earlier that they do good in, rahu does good in the uh earth signs and air signs and ketu does good in the fire signs and water signs okay so till next time if you have any questions queries or comments then please let me know in the comment section and remember god is there with you all the time just look to him and right left he will be there okay do not worry and if you have not subscribed then please subscribe to the channel okay and until next time bye bye have a great day see you